McCord. I am the American Democracy Project Coordinator. We're the organization putting this on today. Um, and we would like to thank Dr. Macias and Matthew for being here today. We really appreciate their time. So if you would join me in welcoming them, that would be great. Thank you. Okay, well, I guess that's it. Well, first of all, thank you very much uh, for being here today. I, I, I truly appreciate it, <clears throat> and I appreciate Matt in all the work we've done together on this uh, project. Um, so, our, you know, uh, we've all gone through COVID, right? The, the last t March of 2020. Uh, so, the, the research question, if you will, was how did COVID-19 affect Latin America, which is the area I specialize in? and Mexico is near and dear to my heart. So that's the research question. And of course, Latin America is composed of many countries. So the initial idea was, well, how does COVID, given social, economic, political context of a lot of these countries in Latin America, affect the outcome? So do we have more cases? Do we have less cases? Are some governments more efficient than others in controlling the pandemic? And so that's kind of the, the broad research question. And so the results of our of our of our work is what's what we're part of what we're, 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 what we're going to show you today. And and we're also going to go into some of the countries uh, that we're looking at. And in the later part, we we you know we, we did the comparison of the countries, and then we were like, okay, how does uh, you know the first world compare to this? So we, we picked the United States for obvious reasons because you all relate to it. Uh, and we've all gone through the experience. But also we picked Canada because we have been, uh, we've essentially identified that Canada did things pretty well, or at least better than the, its US counterpart. So we, want, we wanted two frames of reference to be able to compare our, our case studies of Latin America. And so that's the, the later part which we'll see. So uh, I think that's the introduction I have. Cool. Take it away with uh, our initial graphs. Uh, we're just going to come through a few graphs of the six countries we looked at. Um, these are all cumulative, so it's just added up over time. And let's see, we went over Mexico, Brazil, Chile, Bolivia, Cuba, and Costa Rica. We did a nice sampling across the, the hemisphere. Um, <coughs> So no need to fear. We, we see that Brazil is the biggest one here, but we will uh, we will amplify that information so you can see it yes. in the next slide. All right, and we do this throughout. We take out the biggest outliers so that people take, take a closer look at uh, the the several who remain quite low throughout. And uh, of course, these are just the cases, so they will look different from the deaths. Um, Again, several outliers, or two outliers, uh, Brazil and Mexico. I don't know if there's too much to say on these. It's just kind of giving, a, giving you all a uh, look, um, an image in your mind of the progression of COVID throughout these uh, countries. Yeah, and we will, we will get more into details in terms of like the, 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 the Delta variant, and I think the Omicron variant is the very last piece of the, of the pie here. So that's where you see exponential growth. But like, take into consideration that these are things happening in conjunction with the spread of the pandemic. Yeah. Um, let's see. Yeah, this would be the Omicron variant. And right there would be the BA2 variant, the one that's probably people are catching around now. Uh, let me see a little uptick. Again, closer up view without Mexico and Brazil. Yeah, okay. No, I, I just yeah, just keep in mind, right? You see the little lines almost in, in, in accordance with each other. When we take out Mexico, Brazil, you see that there are variations among countries, and you know part of it is population growth, right? Uh, Brazil and Mexico are the the more populous uh, uh, countries in the hemisphere in terms of Latin America, but still, right? There, there are some there are some issues here that it, it's worthwhile taking a look at. Um, So we, uh, I'll talk about Brazil. Uh, <coughs> so Brazil, uh, as you saw from the graphs, right, Brazil uh, and the United States are kind of the outliers, the, 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 the places where you have the most, the most cases, the most deaths associated with COVID. 
Uh, and so we we wanted to plant this out, or we wanted to lay it out in, in, in a structure, right? We want structure to be able to explain these things. And so <clears throat> what we ended up finding is, that, uh, we identified three things that, that can kind of make up our case study. The first one is, is leadership, right? Who's in charge? Uh, and what are they saying to uh, promote safety or simply say this is a hoax? The second one is the healthcare system, so these countries have healthcare systems. Some are more robust than others, and so that's something we want to take a look at. And the other, the other one we, we named governance, and it's the you know, in um, I guess I'll put it this way, right? In, in the in, in the context of the United States, right? We had Trump as president during COVID, but then on, in, in the in the in the uh, on the uh, on the background, in the background was was Fauci, right? Basically dictating the policy. So there is. Right, you have the leadership, but then on the other hand, you have governance, the, the actual system itself uh, laying out policy. So that's what we take a look at in these countries. And so the first case in Brazil, we have Jair Bolsonaro, uh, far right wing uh, president of, of uh, Brazil, came into power prior to COVID um, 2018, I believe. And uh, so he's the one that faced the pandemic. The thing with, so on the leadership perspective, Bolsonaro is very similar to Trump. He is a or in this, in the case of Bolsonaro, he basically uh, out, um, he said that the, the COVID was not uh, that COVID was not not as a big deal. It was a, it was a little cold, and so right from the leadership perspective, there is very little leadership that you could see with Bolsonaro and his handling of the pandemic. In terms of the healthcare system, Brazil is a federalist system, which means that health, the healthcare pro, uh, provi uh, the healthcare that's provided is really run by states, so local governments. So it doesn't really matter what leadership says in this in this regard because the power resides in those states. Of course, that is an issue because wealthier states like Rio de Janeiro or, or Sao Paulo have much more money to be able to funnel into their healthcare system. So when we take a look at uh, less wealthier states like Manaus, uh, we, we see that these places were heavily hit by caseloads and by death. Uh, loads. And so that's also what it plays into the governance, right? So if so, what happens in the pandemic is, uh, as Bo Bolsonaro is saying, this is fake. This is we're not going to do anything. The states are stepping in. They are prepping their hospitals to the best of their capacities. Similar scenarios that over over, over um, not enough capacity, oxygen uh, oxygen running low, medical supplies running low, but. The, the system manages, again, depending on where you are in, in the state of Brazil, or in, in, in what, what, whatever state is in charge of, of its healthcare system. The same thing with vaccines. As vaccines are introduced to Brazil, the states are the ones in charge of buying those vaccines and distributing them. There, uh, I think as of last week, uh, there was uh, some news that came out of Brazil saying that uh, Pfizer had sent numerous emails to Bolsonaro saying, Whenever we have we have vaccine to sell you, like just tell us when. And the Bolsonaro government never got back to them. So right again, but that's that's the leadership. But again, on the local day to day, you know, running of things, sta states in Brazil stepped in, and they're the ones that, um, for better or for worse, got you know, got the numbers that you have on, on screen. So it could have been worse, yes. And so what is interesting also that we take a look at these countries is. Okay, so how does uh, Brazil or the, the leadership get affected by COVID-19? And so what you have in Brazil specifically is uh, this Sunday, we have the, uh, the, the, the first round of the uh, presidential election where you have essentially Jair Bolsonaro being challenged by a, a former president, Lula da Silva, that is saying you did a really bad job with the pandemic. You should vote me instead, instead of you know, instead of you. So it's a referendum on his handling of the pandemic. So that's you know, we, we won't know what the outcome of the election is, but it's a very the the, the campaign uh, on Lula's side is very clear cut in saying you did a really bad job. You shouldn't be in power. So that's uh, that's the case uh, for Brazil. Anything to add? No, let's so. let's move on to the to, to Mexico. So Mexico is, uh, I'll just talk about Mexico, if you can judge for yourself. Mexico, uh, Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador is the current president of Mexico. He doesn't face a, um, he faced a midterm election. He actually did pretty well. He, his, the election, the presidential election is still a couple years away. 
we'll see what happens. But the leadership is Andrés Manuel López Obrador. The healthcare system is a federal, a centralized federal healthcare system known as Instituto Mexicano del Seguro Social. Essentially, healthcare is universal in Mexico. It has its pitfalls. It, it's, it's, you know, it, it, it exists. The governance. So the governance is the federal government dictated policy, and then it kind of lets states do their thing. So similar to Brazil, right? Depending on what state you you are in Mexico, some states have more resources than, than others. In terms of the healthcare system, Mexico centralized it. It's it essentially designated COVID hospitals, and so if you were sick with COVID, at the, to the extent you 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 needed to go to a hospital, uh, you went to the COVID only hospital, and so all the medicines were centralized, like everything that. So the, the cool thing is, if you got sick and you needed oxygen, you, you find it there. Medicine, whatnot, you, you would find it there. So everything was centralized. The, the issue was trying to get uh, beds, right? If you got if you got sick, you might, you might have to wait in line, and you might have to you might die. So that's there's always a, a clear uh, there's always a lining here where, where, where people like they 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 have to be really really sick to go to the hospital. So that that's what you end up having people. And not only in Mexico, but like for example, Bolivia is very similar, right? It's it's so we talk about like high death rates in, in hospitals, and people didn't want to go to the hospital because they're like we're gonna die, but but they were waiting to the last minute to go to the hospital. So it's it, it's give and take. Um, but you know, if any medicine was needed, it was provided by the government. So the government fit, flipped the bill for anything that anybody sick with COVID needed. That in the aftermath of the treatment. So again, very centralized system, it, it, it worked. Um, so what, what about the governance though? The governance, or the, sorry, the leadership under, 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 under Manuel Lopez Obrador is very similar to Bolsonaro. So he himself is a left wing uh, uh, president, but when the pandemic started, he was like, oh, nothing to worry about. It's, it'll be fine. He continued on uh, touring the country, and he gave to uh, at least one very famous speech where he takes out this four-leaf clover and says, "That's pretty much what you need." And he t then he took out two two saints that he prays to, and it's like you, we just need to pray to God and everything will be fine. So you see from the government from the leadership side, it is it's it's not a, you know he is not taking this seriously, but from the governance side, the, the system itself is doesn't really necessarily does what the president says and so it takes matters into its own hands so that's where you start seeing right uh, the the difference between leadership the healthcare system that exists and is pretty robust in mexico and then the governance structure the actual the, the boots on the ground doing the hard work um what's the next country chile chile right. yes chile chile we identified as uh pretty strong leadership uh, pretty stable leadership. So that leadership is Sebastián Pineda, uh, moderate rights president, and then there was elections um, in October, and then we have the election of moderate left, uh, Gabriel Boric. So the leadership structure isn't really significant in terms of Chile because it doesn't, you have transition, it's peaceful. From the get-go, Pineda is, this is serious, we need to deal with it, and in, in kind of a so what Chile recognized under Pineda was we need to centralize, we need to, we need to essentially make sure our hospitals have everything they need. And we're gonna spend money to do that. We're gonna try to give money to people to, you know, it's essentially economic stimulus. And so our objective as a country is not to prevent COVID because we can't lock down the country forever, but rather we need to, we need to make sure that the spread is such that our hospital systems can deal with it. And so that's the, that, that's the initial intent of the Chilean government. It follows through. And so we, we end up seeing fairly, fairly good results in terms of Chile. It has a very strong um, uh, healthcare system, uh, but it has locality issues. And I'll, I'll let Matt talk a little bit about those locality issues. And then governance, as I mentioned, is very proactive. Like they took steps to ensure that uh, they were gonna do everything they, that the hospitals needed in terms of providing for people that, that, were, that were gonna get sick. Can we talk about questions? A little bit, of, a little bit maybe about the, uh, the, the locality issues, if you want. Okay, um, I'll try to keep it brief, just to compare it to Canada later on, because Chile and Canada turn out to be pretty similar in how they uh, 
basically run the pandemic. Um, they both have very strong healthcare systems. They have existed for a decent amount of time. Um, but the, the issue they have is just uh, the population versus the just geographical mass of each country. Canada has about 100 so million, 100 plus million, I think I could be wrong with numbers. And it's, but it's geographical size is huge. So as well as their healthcare system is, sometimes there's too much distance between like a rural area and a hospital and people might just find it more favorable just like at home. It's a supposition. Chile is no different as um, large population groupings in major cities, but rural don't uh, rural areas don't get as much access to healthcare. Pretty much that. All right, and now we have Cuba and Costa Rica. Put them both on the same side because they're pretty similar, but also quite different. Cuba. Cuba probably handles the pandemic the best out of all of these as far as case numbers goes. Um, this is without going, you don't have to agree with how they run their country, but as far as the pandemic went, handled it probably the best. They, when it comes to the leadership, they have a really strong communist government. Um, it's stable, it's authoritative, and instead of having leadership where you're kind of wishy-washy, it tells people what to do and they kind of have to do it. Um, healthcare system, they have, they have had for a very long time a well-established healthcare system, which is preventative in nature, um, seeks to keep people healthy before they get ill, and they also, well, it kind of ties in with governance, um, where they have action plans where in case of emergencies, military uh, tribunals will step in, military get involved, as well as pretty much organizing uh, the healthcare system on a national level. They will Try to think of the example I was going to use. They had so they have clinics spread out for the entire country, and they would have um, nurses and medical students go out to each individual house every single day. They all had assigned houses, people to look after, and then they would um, check up on them, see how they're doing, take a temperature, COVID test, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that's just an example of how they did it. And they were able to keep you know pretty control on it, and as well as just keep people healthy because they're checking on them every day. They don't have to go to the hospital, they go to you. They go to the hospital for you too, but that's not what I'm saying. And then we have Costa Rica, which is similar because it handles the pandemic really well, but um, it is different in that it's not communist. It's a strong, stable democracy. And leadership is not even very interesting. So the previous ones we've talked about the presidents and how they've uh, handled the situation. This one, the current president was the finance minister in the former government, which shows that really nothing much changed. Everything went well, so they elected a new person. And healthcare system, they have, um, they have a really strong healthcare system. They put a lot of money into their healthcare system. And I actually don't know when, I think it was the 90s or 80s they abolished the military? 1954. I was completely wrong. <laughs> okay. Yeah, 1954 they abolished the military. They took all those funds put it to other uses, uh, public sources. And so they have a very uh, well-funded culture. And governance kind of leads to the same thing as the leadership. They have a very stable government to the point where it doesn't matter, and the institutions go along with this, it doesn't really matter who's in charge. They're gonna trust the government because the government's stable, it always does right, it's a stable democracy. You don't have to worry about it and they trust the government. So people listened when they told them to mask up, Take vaccines, et cetera, et cetera, what to do, what not to do. That's about it. Anything else? Oh, no? No. Oh. Moving into Bolivia. All right, Bolivia. Uh, this one's a special child. Yeah. Um, it, it's, it's interesting. So leadership kind of doesn't have it for a good portion of the pandemic. Just before the pandemic hit, in about November, December, there was a military coup, um, ousted long-term 14 years. There you go. Yeah. Uh, Evo Morales, uh, the Moss Party, leftist um, government originally, and he fled to Mexico, I believe, yeah. and um, interim conservatives took over. And it was just interim government. They, didn't, they weren't elected. And then in mid-2020, they faced uh, elections to see if they would actually get elected to office. They lost. So, and then the party, they, uh, the, the coup kicked out, came back into power. Um, but pretty much throughout the entire thing, there really wasn't any leadership because all the political leadership at the top 
was busy having a coup, not and just infighting, and not really on government so much. Um, the healthcare system. There's a couple of issues. I mean, there's ma massive issues with it. Um, there are several cases where um, warehouses were discovered full of, filled with dead bodies. A couple of uh, journalists would find them, um, and they are greatly suspected of uh, underreporting deaths and cases. Um, we'll see on the graphs in a bit, a kind of reference point. Uh, they always kind of remain near the bottom, but you can't really believe it because they just weren't very active. Um, there's already a distrust in Bolivia of the healthcare system. Um, I don't, I'll let you talk a little more about that in a little bit. Mm -hmm. And um, as far as governance goes, kind of ties into everything. Uh, this is the underlying infrastructure below the leadership. They they are very helpful. They recommend, like they just kind of throw out random things. They recommended ivermectin and hydro hydroxychloroquine. Ivermectin is removed um, parasites and horses. And hydroxychloroquine is to treat malaria, I believe. So, I mean, this affects stuff. Yes, that it's it not very helpful when fighting a virus. Um, on the parasite, there one. No, oh, it's different. Completely different. Um, anything else? Um, yeah. I, so the, the the other thing with Bolivia is when the, uh, the, 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 the the far right party took over after in, in the immediacy of the, of, the, uh, of, of the coup, uh, they not only endorsed these types of medications as cure for COVID, they also started, they also used the pandemic as a pretext to put Morales supporters in jail say, claiming that they were sick with COVID. So, right, if you're the general population, you're like, I don't trust the government, I really don't trust the government. I'm not going to go to get treatment, and so what you end up having in Bolivia, which is sim again similar to other parts of Latin America, is a lot of self-medication, and so right that, that's and that also uh, Bolivia is, is is interesting because of, the, of how do we get accurate numbers, and this is a question that we were we constantly ask ourselves: how can we get accurate numbers for Bolivia? How can we get accurate numbers for Cuba? How can we, are the numbers for Costa Rica really what they are? Because um, they're really low numbers, right? So it, it, in Bolivia, it's tricky because a lot of people didn't go to the hospitals. They, they self-medicated and many of them died. So we don't know. We suspect that the numbers of Bolivia are skewed in that regard also. But again, right, the political circumstances under which Bolivia was passing during 2020 especially put it in a very challenging position when compared to other parts of Latin America. In the aftermath of the mass party party coming back to power, uh, it is it really it it did a very proactive job in trying to so they got the later part of the pandemic so they they got to institute the vaccines. Still, there's a lot of hesitancies hesitancies but didn't didn't say it correctly <laughs> second time uh, about the uh, Bolivian population getting vaccinated because again right if, if the government is pushing hydroxychloroquine as the solution and then they're saying hey try this vaccine people are like. Yeah, no, I'd rather not. Uh, so there's a very uh, intra there's a very ingrained distrust for the government. So, but but with the uh, leftist party back in power, you have upwards of 50% uh, of the population being inoculated as of uh, our, our when we stop when when our data stops. And then, uh, but that that it, it's lagging behind other countries, right? When we take a look at the vaccination rates of Mexico, Brazil. Actually, Brazil is very interesting. It has like a like an 80% vaccination rate, which is higher than the United States. And Mexico is somewhere in the middle with like 60% vaccination. So that's that's what I needed to add. All right. <laughs> All right. So let's see. I think we're just going on to Paris. All right. So. This one, I mean, it's kind of self-explanatory. We just went over all the Latin American countries. Except this time, we put in uh, <coughs> U.S. and Canada. Canada's gray. U.S. is bright, bright. It's kind of hard to tell. It's like finding the uh, easiest one. It's the big one. It's it's just the big one. It's kind of the easy one. What's, um, the, what's the finding? Find that guy you find, you used to find in the uh, what, Waldo? Well, Waldo. It's like kind of like we're fun, it's like finding Waldo. Yeah. If you can find Canada, you're lucky. But we we have an extra graph for that. We take out. The big guys, U.S. and Canada. U.S. and Canada, um, uh, U.S. number one in deaths in the world. 
Brazil is, uh, I think, sorry, I didn't say Canada earlier. Uh, Brazil is second for deaths, just for context. So it will kind of always be way too big on graphs, especially when it comes down to deaths. Um, and this is um, without those big twos, just so we can get a closer look at all the, uh, the lower down ones. Um, let's see. And here we have purple Chile and orange Canada, which they have similar. Well, I think Canada's quite a bit bigger, mm -hmm. but as far as infection rates and deaths, they're pretty similar. And as you can see, they kind of spiral around each other as they go up. And they have very similar systems and infrastructure to government. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, no, and so this is where we start seeing the <clears throat> the difference of, of the three outliers, or the three things we're looking at, right? Governance, leadership, and the healthcare system. This is what we see in the data. So. You have death, yes, but it, it varies from country to country depending on what well, we, we would make the argument on how their countries are structured. And so we still we still have the variants that kick in and you have spike. But right, this is the thing, right? In Mexico you have a really big spike. Chile and Canada, or this yeah, Chile and Canada have it pretty much under control. They will have spikes, but they they their their handling of the pandemic is much more controlled <clears throat> when you when you take a look at Mexico, for example. And, and yes, we need to figure out the, uh, or we, the, you know, population sizes, it, it, it matters, but still, uh, what we found is Canada and Chile do, to, do a pretty good job for the size country they are. Uh, this is pretty much the same, except this is deaths. Uh, again, US number one, Brazil second behind. So it does skew it, and then you have Mexico, which I think is sixth, seventh in the world. It changes. So. Um, and then we have all of the small ones down there, and then we take away those, and then we can get a closer look. Whereas, and you can see where we have Cuba and Costa Rica, where in a certain way, they both handle it really well. Cuba only has one spike, and then it basically flatlines, which is depressing. Even as the Omicron variants come around, I think the only time it's spiked actually was probably late Delta, or and Summer early. of 21. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Probably not. Um, those two pair at the bottom, very similar structure, uh, very similar um, how they ran it. And then you have Bolivia, which, well, I don't really believe it, so take a grain of salt. And then Chile and Canada, just kind of 10 or 20. This is most of the countries. Yep. I can jump into it. <coughs> okay, yeah. Um, so, again, bringing it back to this, this idea of comparing it now to the United States. And if you beg to differ, that's okay. We, we, we can have the question, we can have the, the discussion when, when we're done. Uh, so we identified leadership as weak, right? The, the federal government, the, the leadership, or the Trump administration did a very poor job, right? It, it, it essentially tried to, uh, <coughs> it, it didn't do a good job. I'll, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> Healthcare system is mixed because, right, we have some of the best hospitals infrastructure in the world, but it depends on loca locality. It depends on it, it, it's it depends on multiple factors. It just we, 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 we see that other countries do a better system, do a better job with their healthcare system than than the, in the United States. And governance is it's mixed, right? Because there's a lot of back and forth, with a lot of, a lot of, a lot of negotiation that has to that takes place with leadership between states and how do you enforce mandates and how do you get rid of mandates and you know every state is different, so that complicates things when we take a look at the United States. Now, we compared that to Brazil, so I, we identified Brazil as weak leadership on, on the Bolsonaro. Uh, Brazil mixed for it, its healthcare system because it is a federal system, so uh, again, the, 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 more, the richer states get better infrastructure, and so they're better equipped to deal with the pandemic, but also to purchase and uh, deploy vaccines. And then governance is also mixed because of, of again, because of that federal system, <coughs> it, it's you get uh, unequal treatment throughout the board. When we take a look at Mexico, um, I identified leadership as weak because right we, we have a president that's peddling um, um, saints as the cure to vaccine, and then but the healthcare system is adequate because it exists. It, it's it's firmly in place throughout the country, and it is it is strained. It is I would argue strained to, to its maximum capacity but it, it, it manages to control the situation. And then governance is, is mixed because the the day-to-day the, the -day operatives 
that take care of the pandemic do a good job. They, they, they really do. And Mexico has, uh, 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 his last name is Gatel. Uh, I forgot his, his first name now. Uh, but Gatel is very similar to Fauci, right? Again, he is, he is basically, every day the president cedes his, his space so Gatel can talk about what's happening in the country. It's a daily briefing. So we, we, in Mexico, we would get a daily briefing every day. So, I mean, and then the federal government has a, a pretty strong presence, but then it lets states figure it out on, on themselves. Bolivia, we left it blank, because honestly, there is no government. Okay, but, I mean, I might be short selling Bolivia, but I mean, right, it goes through a coup, it has a government that, that it has a, a right-wing government that's pushing, pushing um, horse pills and um, hydroxychloroquine as, as solutions. There is general distrust in, in the leadership, so really there isn't really a lot of governance. I, I'm sorry, there really isn't uh, any type of leadership that, that I feel comfortable with that defined. It's weak, but like weak doesn't do, doesn't do its service. I, I, I would make the argument. The healthcare system is weak also because Bolivia, next to Haiti, is probably one of the, some of the, the the poorest countries in the hemisphere in terms of money. So the other thing with with the healthcare system is. They just don't have money to fund the healthcare system. Um, under Evo Morales, uh, a lot of the gas money that's produced by, by essentially extracting gas was what had been funneled to the healthcare system, but it just, there is a general distrust in people and in Bolivia, <coughs> and so that was an issue. And then you have governance, which again is, is weak for Bolivia. So what happens in, in Bolivia, um, is that uh, about 80% of the economy is informal, which means they, they're, they're not government jobs, they're not, gov they're not paying jobs that, you know, if you, could, if you need to take a break or a pandemic, there's no subsidies. So the government provided no subsidies or it, towards the end of the pandemic or in 21, they provide like a $70 stipend, which is nothing. And so what do, what do you do in that circumstance if you're an informal worker? Well, you need to keep selling in the streets, right? Because if you're a fruit vendor, <clears throat> if, you're, if your job or if your livelihood depends on selling things on the street and the, gov and the government says, we have to lock down, the people just didn't pay attention. And they, they went out to the streets and they kept, kept working in their informal economy. So there is very little governance that we, we, can, we can identify <clears throat> in Bolivia to it, it's Bolivia is the, you know, the problem child we, we, took, we took a look at. Um, is there anything I'm missing? We have then we have the next one, um, which is between Canada being the more successful story of the Anglo Northern American nations. Um, leadership adequate. Uh, it's per stays pretty consistent. Um, it was I think it's been Justin Trudeau, President Justin Trudeau throughout the Prime Minister. Um, Trudeau, Trudeau, the whole thing. Healthcare system, again, adequate. It does really well, but again, it lacks in locality issues. It's just such a large landmass, it's hard to cover everybody, and that's where the strains are really felt. Um, and governance, strong, kind of similar theme. It's, they just are consistent, stay on the message, and they manage to enforce their mandates well and people listen to it because it's a strong and stable government. And there are, of course, those reasons that every nation has, but um, people trust it. So they, they, for the most part, listen. And then we have Cuba, um, strong leadership. <coughs> yeah, they don't hold the same similar things. Um, communist government, can't really disagree if you wanted to, so kind of with that. And healthcare system, strong. They had nurses. I think they're kind of going over everything before anyways, but. Yeah, and, and Cuba's notorious for uh, exporting uh, doctors abroad, so yes. it, once it got its situation under control, it started exporting, namely to Venezuela, but also to, towards Mexico, and so any nation that they needed. Cuba is also uh, uh, one of the few countries that came up with its own vaccine and has upwards of 90% inoculation in the country. So again, it's just Cuba is run so well, you might disagree, but and people are taught to obey the system that they do what the system follows. And, it's, and you see this also not only with vaccines, but for example, with hurricanes. So Cuba is notorious, like, it's just hurricane season, right? It's being hit with a hurricane right now. So, and so. they're probably gonna do well because th they have systems in place. So what happens in Cuba is, if there's a hurricane, people go to shelters. 
and then they 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 weeded out of the shelter. They, then they come out and they rebuild. That that's it's it's a very clear system, right? It's not people saying, "Oh, I'm going to stay here until I die," because the, the government steps in and says, "You need to leave now." So right, people know their place and they they follow suit. Um, Costa Rica. I don't even know if there's much to add on that one. It's, it's just, it's, the, Costa Rica is one of the ones I struggle to find much to say about it because it's just very stable. It does a very good job. It has consistent climate. It may, manages to keep um, infections from rising too much. It keeps it manageable. Their infrastructure and their health system never gets overloaded. Um, and as far as leadership, we didn't put it as strong because um, it just didn't really matter who was in charge. Uh, their leadership is just stable. It it just gets the job done. It doesn't need somebody who is commanding. It's a democracy. It functions well, um, and that leads to the strong healthcare system, which has been around for a very long time, as well as the governance. It's just institutionally strong. <coughs> and then um, Chile, similar thing. It's as you can see, it's pretty much identical to Canada. Corey said. It's the only issues it really has. Um, and healthcare system is strained by drug. Um, that's about it. I think that's about it. Yeah. So now we go into the questions. Which I will before we, we open up to the floor. I will, I'll, I'll explain the images. So the, the, the first image here is of, of, of Cuban nurses, right? And their mission, their mandate to go out to houses and check on people. So this is of, of course it's propaganda, but it is it's very likely what Cuba did do. It's it sent out its mil its, its medical professionals. To check up on people, and then in Mexico, that, that's Lopez Gatel, the, the vice minister of health, giving his daily briefing, where you have Lopez Obrador in the background seating his place. So that's where that, that's you know I mentioned with Mexico, you have a leader, but then in the background, it's being run by healthcare professionals, and so that's um, well, that is our cue for questions. Okay. So you did a great job of talking about the differences with leadership and healthcare and governance in all of these countries. So a time traveling alien is going to come and pick you up and drop you back in 2020 in one of those one of those countries. Which one are you go to? <laughs> uh, um, I have I have a really clear answer, but do you want to respond? I, I wouldn't mind if it was Costa Rica or Cuba. Why? I, why? Because of everything you've um, wine? They just handle it so well. I, I probably Costa Rica. It's a democracy. You get a little more freedom there. Um, but Cuba also does a really admirable job, so I can't really discount either. There, there is. I feel like was kind of like a feeling when you talk about Cuba. Like, what if they're lying? Um, I think the main takeaway from Cuba is they did it so well they didn't need to lie, and so they could. That's why, like, they uh, when you saw that spike um, during summer 2021, it goes up. They reported it. Um, because still, even then, and they handled it so well. And you can see the effectiveness of the vaccine, because for the most part, it's just stayed flat, um, except for that one spike. Small inclinations, of course, but for the most part, it was dead. I don't know if that answered your question. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, I've been to Cuba, so I, 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 the answer, I think, would be Costa Rica. But I, I would feel probably more safer in Cuba. Um, but uh, yeah, Costa Rica, and again, I see that this part of my heart says, uh, como Mexico no hay dos, so it'd be Mexico probably. I, I mean, I spent most of my, I spent a good chunk of my time in Mexico during the pandemic anyway, so I know how it was. We got sick in Mexico. It, you know, I, that's, it was hard for me to judge Mexico, and we had a very, really long conversation, like, how do I judge Mexico? Because I'm, I'm too close to it. I can't, I, I couldn't detach myself to it. And so, but part of the, you know, what, what I found interesting about Mexico, but it applies to, to, to Latin America, is Latin America is willing to try out stuff. So when we're talking about uh, the horse pills, I mean, if you're gonna die and you're giving the choice of, do you want to try this like drug, <laughs> or you, you you might die, so you're gonna try the horse pill. So I don't know, it just it's, it's it was it was really hard to. To, to lay myself on, on choosing or picking between the both of us where Mexico fell. It's it's difficult because from the Western perspective, you think of it as you know, like this horse pills is ridiculous, or it you know people latch onto it. And it's like this is the cure, but as from his perspective, it's more you know, and the worst off you're going to get is you're not going to have any parasites. So 
Or, you know, Denver. That's kind of side. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Anything else? Any more questions? <coughs> Did you did you look at like population percentages too affected kind of like in the different countries? Uh, I guess the I, I should how so? Like like what percentage of the population like was infected or what population like percentage died or how did that? Come out? Yes, uh, can we we, we we can you answer that? Sort of. Okay. <laughs> we kind of did. Kind of did. We didn't really focus on percentages so much. Um, we just, when we're looking at the numbers, most of them, none of them really see too much. Like even the U.S., which has the highest deaths, um, I think the highest cases as well, almost definitely. Um, it's still like, we only lost 1% of the population, still a lot for a country of 370, 380 million. Uh, so we didn't really focus on that so much because the other factors were more important, like how well it overall went, just looking at the graphs. Um, we could have. It, when I looked at the data myself, it didn't seem like it helped too much, so we decided just. just and we did talk about it because we about because it. we we were, especially this is this is the instance when, when we start to ask ourselves, uh, wait a minute, what's happening? The when, when we take a look at Canada and Chile, we, we we ask ourselves that question. Wait a minute, what's our what's our population size? And so we figured out that Canada had had a higher population size, in, than Chile, and so right. This, this graph, the cases are very similar. So which which means that Canada did a better job than Chile in handling the, the pandemic. So, but we didn't really get into numbers. The, 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 the research paper itself will have more information like that, but uh, we, the instance we asked ourselves that question was this one. And we ended up, we ended up seeing that, you know, Chile, it really, it really only affects how we explain Chile. The rest of the countries are, they tend to be pretty, they're, they're, it depends on countries, and they tend to be smaller portion, portions of, of the population. Probably the outlier is Bolivia, because it just it, it underreports. And you really can't count it. It's the data is only somewhat reliable at best. And our data comes from uh, Johns Hopkins. Oh, no, it's not Johns Hopkins. It's well, WHO. And we compared it with Johns Hopkins. We did, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's still very similar. Especially in the beginning, it's a little weird, but. It's, I mean, we're talking about the difference between two cases and four cases. Yeah. And then sometimes you have a spike, but it's like, oh, you, they probably, the numbers probably came in for that report, and it's like, oh, it's a, it's a, it's a climb. But it's, it's fairly consistent. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Concerns? Complaints? Complaints? <laughs> <laughs> Were you or your families personally touched by COVID? I, yeah, yes, I, I uh, yes, got sick. I was fortunate, mine did not. I, I had COVID actually about a month and a half ago, but it's a, I'm fully vaccinated, so that was fine. Did you have a question? Um, I was just gonna make a comment. I don't know how this could be done in any sort of an easy way to complement your research, but from kind of the like social standpoint, it would be interesting to compare not just the numbers that you're seeing in these different areas, but what are the people's perceptions of how their countries handled um, the pandemic in those different areas, and to see if you know the the places you're saying maybe handled it better. Do those people think that too? So I don't know. I just think that could be interesting to think about um, with this kind of a project. Yes, and that's an excellent question. And so. <laughs> Uh, for example, in Cuba, we, we talked about Cuba a little bit, and so we, there is a spike in, in, in uh, the summer of 21, and what you what you see with the spike in 21 is there are, pop there are popular protests that usually don't happen in Cuba because people don't really have the right to critique the government. And so you have popular unrest, it, but then the spike goes down and people kind of go back to their daily lives. Um, in Bolivia, there's a general distrust, so that's, that's and people are looking for uh, herbal remedies, and and uh, and uh, they're burying their dead and not not in cemeteries. So that, I think that gets a little bit to to to, to Bolivia. Um, and then we have like, for example, I think part of the I mean I don't know maybe part of the answer lies in, in the political structure, right? So if Chile, for example, uh, voted just just recently voted on a, consti uh, a consti uh, an entire new constitution. Uh, it, it, so we're wondering how the social effects affects people and their and their 
in the aftermath of the pandemic. So the, the clear one is Bolivia because they, they voted out their right wing party in Mexico. It's it's tricky. I think if you ask anybody anywhere, they're going to say that their government did a very bad job of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. I, I, I haven't I haven't really heard anybody, but it's something we haven't really looked into. Though. And it was, I mean, kind of what saying. Um, it was something we'll be seeing also with Brazil, for instance, uh, in a maybe not direct way, but with the presidential first round yeah. coming up. Uh, we'll see how it turns out if they decide to keep Bolsonaro or they will re elect Lula yeah, I think Brazil is a very interesting case study because it really is a referendum on the on the presidency of Bolsonaro and his handling of the pandemic. There are many other things I would say that are wrong with Bolsonaro, but people are going to judge him based on his handling of the pandemic. I think currently it looks like he's part of the news, but we won't know until the election. Yeah, he's I think the numbers have been pulling. Five to ten points below Lula? Something like that. I think it was like 9% of the blacks. Yeah. And they, go to, they have a two-round system, so... If, if there is no clear winner, they're going to go into a runoff. We'll, we'll, we'll see. Thank you. Anything else? All right. Can you guys please join me giving them a hand?